At this time, we want to thank also Heather Mother Moore, and special, we want to give us a special thanks to the solo we hear from Mother Evelyn, which is a beautiful solo. God will take care of us. Take care of us. And also to our elders, other members of the gospel, preaching the word, caring us. And also to our deacon and body of Christ, we want to give you thanks also. Today we're going to go into prayer, into the world of prayer, and we're going to give you what God has laid on our heart. Father God, once again, we come before your people with thanksgiving. We just want to say thank you, God, for being the God that you are. Thank you for how you give us the strength, Father. And now we ask you to speak to these lips of clay. Let your spirit come out of our mouth as you want your people to know. Bless them, God, through your word that might give them hear us, hear us to hear and eyes to see the glory that you have set before them in the later days. Father, we just want to say thank you and praise you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic today, uh, this morning, is you are the light of the world. And if we would use a subtopic, it would be let it shine. Just let it shine. We are scripture coming from St. Matthew, verse chapter 5, verse 14 to 6. And we're going to read that from our King James Version. And it reads as follows, ye are the light of the world, a city that sits on a hill, can't be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bush, but on a candlestick. It gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father, which are in heaven. As we look at this particular scripture, Jesus is comparing us, his fathers, to the light. He's saying we are the light of the world. In other words, we, our light unable to be hid. He said no one put a light on a bowl before. No one put a lamp on a bowl because a lamp is designed to help people see in dark places. Christ's word, Christ's word and his attention shows us the true nat nature of the world around us today. We look at it in the beginning, the light means doing your best to live every day on purpose in a way that pleases to God by showing kindness, compassion, anytime we get the opportunity to, to bring that light into this dark world to people that needs it and to be and carry and to have the carry to speak the word of God to each and every one that we meet. When we speak the word and we believe it by faith, it will make a difference in people's life. Jesus said he is the light of the world and he has come as to be that light. So all of us, because we are who he said we are, that light, we can carry out his message to let our light shine above men. In St. John 8, chapter 12, that's the King James Version, he read, Then spoke Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This verse basically means that there is no light in the world apart from Jesus Christ. The light that is, is in us is to be shined in every, in every believer's life, to bring light into this dark world. The question that I put before us today, we shall not just ask to let it shine, we should let, I mean, we should not ask to make it shine. We should ask God to let it shine in our life. Just as Jesus said in his word, we are the light of the world. We also have the opportunity to 
rest in it and show us that if we let it shine, God would have his way in our life. In St. John 9 and 5, Jesus also said that as long as I am in the world, I am the life of the world. So, born again believer that this is what we are here for, to serve and to be servants of the Most High. You know, as of being a servant of the Most High, that means if you are a lay member, a deacon, elder, pastor, or whatever your title might call, or just being a Christian, we had a servant, we had an opportunity and also a requirement to serve, to be a servant. And to be a servant, we have, have a willing heart, not to, I would say, force the word on anyone, but just to let our light shine. And many times in life, I had been through situations that I just let my light shine. Not that I'm boasting about who I am in Christ, but I'm just being myself. When you be yourself, God can use you that much more. So in St. John 12 and 46, it said, I am the light. It said, I came and light into the world that whosoever believe on me shall not abide in the darkness. The light in your, the light in you shine brightly when you let Jesus use you. Be kind and have compassion for everyone you meet. Let your light shine. The other might not glorify you, but it might glorify your Father, which are in heaven. As we also look at Romans 14, excuse me, Romans 4, verse 17. It said, Who quickened in the death and called these things that be not, which be not as though they were? You know, if we look at this word, we say, you know, we use that scripture a whole lot. In our daily life, we say we call them things be not as the word. Other words, we walking by faith, believing what the word said, and say, okay, Father, you said call them things be not. We call healing to our body. Yes, we might be sick, but yes, we believe because the word say that we are healed. Because Jesus said by his strife we are healed. So if we are healed, we call them things into existence. So also we can call things that we run across uh, where we run with different circumstances in our life with people that we met and we meet. Sometimes we might get a, I say a, I don't say a negative attitude or sometimes we might be misunderstand by certain people that we uh, talk to. But if we let God have that and let his light shine in our heart, we have the opportunity to not only to to bless them, to help them, but to teach them in kindness and love, not forcing them to do anything that we should do or we want them to do, but have the opportunity to bring them into the light because of the light that was in us. You know, a long time ago, I experienced something in my younger days I've been a Christian on an old job I used to work. And on that job, I ran into a coworker that we just have a little spouse. I say we would say things that, to each other that I say would rub the other person the wrong way. And I had the attitude that, you know, I won't let nobody say bully me or I would let nobody take advantage of who I would. So at one time in life, you know, we would go in and he would say something, I would have a smart word say back. And, you know, and Back then, I also meant what I said. If I said, I'm going to do something nine out of 10, I would do that. So one day, you know, as I was studying the word, getting into the word, not focused on nothing but God's word, one day it shocked me. It shocked me as well as shocked the other young man. Because we was in the break room, and we were waiting in line to heat up our food in the microwave or what you might call it back then. And I was in line, I looked at him and I said, go ahead in front of me, I'm all right, I'll wait. And at a certain time, he looked at me, and normally, you know, I wouldn't do that. He looked at me and he said, uh, there's something different about you. 
you know, I hadn't really know that, you know, I was that more different, but I was just basically being more counter and I guess loving to him in a way that normally I argue and fuss, but that particular time I choose not to. I just said, you go here, I got time, I'll wait. But he he shocked me by what he said. And I was saying, hmm, I didn't really realize that that the ways I was doing things that reflect on others. So at that time, I found out that when you speak the word and live it, you don't have to let it shine. God like will shine out in your heart. And other will knows it as it shines. And we speak the word life and the God word, it would bring life to others, as I was saying. And if you truly believe it, the action words take a form. James 2, 14 and 17 says that, what good is my brother and sister if someone claims to have faith but have no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but doesn't nothing about their physical need. What good is it? In the same way, faith walks by itself. Let me read it again. In the same way, faith by itself is, is not a comparison by the action and deed. In other words, if we use the word, and we choose not to do anything, but speak the word. Sometimes you can speak the word, but sometimes we have to show and deed and action to line the word up, which was in our heart. But we say we are true to believer, but we are God people. We should have not only the word in the heart, but we should be back that word up with action. It takes action to make everything work. But where faith without action is dead. So let us be what God be want us to be without being the person or the old person in nature that leads us to doing things selfish, unloving, and cruel to others. But just let your light shine. Because Christ said we are the light of the world. So we demonstrate it many times. You know, I was thinking back when Pastor B uh, did a demonstration one time. And that lined up with, she took a glass of water, held the water, and she said, to herself, she said, if I drank this water, it would quench my thirst. Though she said that. But whole while she was holding the cup, she said, if I drank this water, it would quench my thirst. But the action, it had to take action. She had to do something besides hold the water. She would have to drink the water in order to quench the thirst. So as she was saying that, if we don't use action to line up with the word of God, it doesn't mean anything. We have to use the word to line up and take action, become a doer of the word, not a hero only. In Philippians 2, 13, 15, from the NIV version said, if it is good, it is good, God, who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose, to do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault and wrath and cracking generation, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as your whole permanent, the word of God in your heart. Many times we take the word of God serious when we need to, but sometimes we feel a little slack and lack in the word of God and doing what we should do according to God's word. And we begin to focus this morning 
on the word that God said, we are the light of the world. We have an opportunity and as well as a mission to not only keep the word for ourselves, but to spread the gospel to each and every one we meet. And there are several ways we can do it. We can do it in kind deeds, as well as speaking the word in front of big poor pit orders or whoever. But most of we can be more effective and just let God light shine in our heart by the things we do. When we humble ourselves into the word, we become more what Christ wanted to do to mold us and shape us into the word, that we will be what God help us to be and not what man want us to be. You know, we say we come out of the world, but we also live in the world. So as you, we look at that, we look at it in a way that I cannot justify in Christ, but also live in this dark world. Yes, you can be called the light that shine in us, shine in darkness. The word give us light, they give us meaning. The word give us strength and give us courage. As many times we focus on what the world seems and what we cannot change, we have that compassion, we have the confidence in Christ that know he's got our back. We have the confidence knowing that he, he will see us through in the dark time. He will bring light into the, the dark age we live in, but also into our own life that others might see Christ in us. Jesus called us to be fathers also. He said that the salt of the earth purifies. It purifies me for ruin. The believer is here to serve and to humble himself for the fellowship of others. Follow into the godness, follow not into the godness and mortation of the world, but really do not walk in the sins, but also be that light, that salt, that flavor, that, that flavor the food to change the taste. So salt is the spiritual form to change people's attitude also to bring them into the light, to give them the, the, the think, not only to think, but to look deeper into their self, that there is always a solution and an answer if we choose it, the right one. There is also a way we can do things easy, which is not according to the word of God. But when we let God season us, as his word said, and we become that salt, and we become that flavor, we, we then have the opportunity to walk into this dying world and have something to measure our faith by, by doing what the word say do. Loving, kindness, compassion, gentleness, all of them is part of the fruit of the spirit. We let the Christ have his work in us, which is a perfect work. We don't have to be ashamed, just having this courage to stand up and be bold Christians, be able to let his shine. I know many times they say Christians in other churches, other places do so many different deeds, but fully not understand the gospel of the word. A lot of times we can do busy work, but it does encompass nothing if your heart is not in it. When you put your heart in it and your love for Christ in it, then other people can see the difference without you saying anything. That's when Christ can work on the inside. You know, Christ always do his best work on the inside. So at that point, we understand that Christ and our attitude pays a difference in what we think, the way we look at the world, and what's the problem in the world. The world to us seems darkness, but to Christ, it's a bright light that shines in the darkness. It's how we have the perfect attitude, uh, perfect position to walk in and be confident, confident in what Christ wants us to do and wants us to, have to carry out his word. Sometimes we don't have to say nothing, just be there for a friend. 
Sometimes we won't have to even open our mouth, but hold on to a comfort someone that might be in need. Truly, your spirit will shine bright for the light that within you is within Christ itself. So this morning, the word is telling us, just let it shine because we are the light of the world. As Christ said, I come that they might see, they might have a reason to come out of darkness into the light. So that reason is not only for us to glorify in his love and his compassion, but also to help bring others out of the darkness and bring them into the true light, which is in Christ Jesus. And Psalm 19, 119, verse 105 from the King James, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my paths. This, the light is something that necessary to navigate this world of darkness. We need the light to guide us safely through the unseen darkness that awaits us. God's word is in the light of living. The guidance of our existence and the direction of our journey is in what God help us to do. Just as light eliminate, eliminate the way in the darkness, also the, the light in our heart bring peace. Also it brings not only judgment, but it brings love and kindness to everyone we meet. God's word provides clear directions and purpose for our life today. When we are, when what we are, the purpose, what the purpose are for our life is a Christian is to help spread the gospel to his, to this dying world of sin. And to let our light shine in darkness world so people may see it and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. But Jesus come that all may be saved because of the sin that was laid before through the first album, second album, Jesus Christ. Our life is made different. All we have to do is accept him and live according to his word. With the newest of life he changed us to, we can take off the old world and become new in this world to be a witness of what he can and will do in our life. So basically the word, the world, the word changes us from the inside out and brings that peace that we so looking for, that reverence that we're looking for the goodness, the faith that we can put our confidence in the true God, the true Lord and Savior that has our back, someone that we can call on in, in the days and morning time. You know, as I was thinking back in the word, David was not only a great king, but he was a praiser. The Bible said that David was quick to repent, but also he was quick to praise God and give God the glory. But David had full confidence, confidence in God. Not only confidence in God, he had full honor at what God's word said in his heart that he would do. Though sometimes David had his back against the wall when he was going against King Saul, but he never lost focus on what the word mean and what the word said to him. Though David many times said, the Lord was his refuge. He was, he was honoring God because he put all his faith and all his belief and honor in the word of God. So as we live in this dark world without strength, we can be confident to know that Jesus has our back also. We are confident to know that when we tied up in this world and there's no, no way to turn, the word specifically says, Come, learn of me, teach. 
and we begin to study God's word, we can see the light open up. We can see things begin to change in our life. And, and as a father or as you might be a mother, saints, you can see the change also here in your family life by the way you look at things and by the way you do. We can be that light in this dark world and we choose to, or we can dim our light by doing what the world say. It's time for us to choose what will we do? How will we look at the world today? As a father, a servant of the Most High, able to stand in this dark world and declare his gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of deliverance, the gospel of our Lord and Savior who died for us. He comes for us. Through the Bible said, we cannot do anything. He paid the price that we owe. But because of his love, that is shine so bright in our hearts. That love can shine and brighten on other people's hearts as well. And then the word can go forth and touch someone else in this dark world. Now we can't touch everyone and what we say, but someone can touch another person by the spirit and the love that they show towards them just being there. It's the little small act that we, we do to bring deliverance and peace into their hearts. God is a loving, kind, and gentle God. So Jesus, as representative of Christ, who died for our sake and intercede on our behalf, give us the strength to stand and clear his word and be that ambassador that he are looking for us to be in this time in late years. Um, the other might see Christ, but not see us, but see the Christ that in on the inside of us that shine bright. And second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20 from the NIV version say, we are Christian ambassador, ambassadors. God has made his appearance, his appearance through us. We speak for Christ when we, we speak. We appeal to others to come back to God. For God made Christians, made Christ who never sinned to be sin offered for our sin. That we, that we sh could be made righteous with God through Christ Jesus. So let's make our mind up today. Let's be focused on what God wants to be, not what man wants to be. As a representative of Christ, just stand on his word and let our light shine so others might see the darkness in this evil days. Not because of the felicity or the power or the pride that you have in your heart for the, I say, not only the title or whatever you might be in, but do it out of love for your brother, man, and sister that is struggling in this earth, that struggling in the darkness, don't see the light. Sure, we have, we will have the opportunity to touch each and every one we meet, God's way they might be, or where they might be headed. We can change their direction because of the love of Christ in us. We don't have to do what you call a great deal. Just be yourself. Let God use you in the way that he wants to use it. We all are called for a purpose in life. Sometimes we don't understand it, but as we get into this world, we will find this purpose be more clear than ever before. It might not be preaching the word, it might not be passing the word, but whatever he has for our life is important. If it doesn't have to be a servant, to serve others, to help others, to lift up others, to care for others, to comfort others. All of that is part of letting that light shine in your heart. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the, a duty that we must carry out. 
we say we are born believers, we have a duty to not only stand on this word, we have a duty to carry it out as God leads in our heart. Each and everybody purpose on life is not the same. No matter what come or go, we don't have the same purpose in our life. Though one thing do line up, we are born again believer. And we is an ambassador for Christ. From the small to the big to the powerful to the young. We all are here to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to this dying world. So yes, don't get caught up in titles and what it all mean, but yes, get focused on what the word means in our heart. As we study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth, let us be what God make us to be. Mold us and shape us all to God into his word that we might be not only the salt of this word, but we might shine bright among men that they might glorify your Father, which are in heaven. Truly, this morning, the Lord truly is blessing us. He gives us the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge to live in this dying world with peace and harmony. I know it every day don't seem bright, but one thing we can be sure of, there is an outlet which is a Jesus Christ. There is a confidence that we can go to when we, we might say depressed or confused. I use that word. And sometimes when we just been hard-headed, not doing what the will of the Father has led us to do or tell us to do. Me, myself, I had been there many times to do what I should have did. But unfortunately, he had patience enough to work on me and bring me back into the fold of the light that I should be in serving him at the beginning. But as a Christian, I know the most important thing is to spread his good news, his word of light. So it's not only my opportunity to be before you today, but it's a pleasure to be able to let you say, let your light shine. It's not nothing that big we have to do. It's not nothing so great that you had to do. You don't have to hold a stick up and walk around the city and say, Christ lives in me. Whoever that want him can just pray and believe. You don't have to promote yourself like that, but whatever he used you and mold you and want you to do, just let it shine. Be the person who God have you to be, no matter what. As Christ up there in heaven, intercede on our behalf. We are here to intercede on our brother's behalf. We are here to bring that peace that they longing for, the help they longing for, even the healing that they longing for through Christ's name. We are here to be a representative of Christ, standing in the gap for whoever we can to bring his truth to light. And important to let your light shine in our life and also in other people's life that they might see him but not us. The light is a, our light shines so bright, but you know, sometimes that light also get dim. But one thing about a light, even in the smallest light in a very dark area of our life Excuse me. can be a beacon the other might see that light. What I mean by that, you may you ever know you ever turn off a light and the night is very dark and as you might just flick a candle or whatever, the light begins to illuminate in the room. And everything begins to get so bright. A bright enough that darkness does not compel the light, cannot hide the light. The light just shines out. Your life can be that light. Your life 
can be again that light, that that beacon in the dark that shines bright in the dark world to bring light and to bring love to to each everyone we meet. So in other words, guidance, direction, purpose, all of that is in the word of God for you. If we study and we focus our life not on ourselves, but helping others. You know, Pastor B used to use the word three T's, you know, time, tires, and talent. We all have that. But are we willing to use all that for God's purpose? Yeah, we we have our fun doing the things of the world. But sometimes we have to grow up and do the thing according to God's purpose. That way, I would like to shine in the dark world. That way, it only illuminates the light that coming out of us. Too. That Christ shines so bright in other people's life, but us might not glorify us, but glorify the Father. We, I know, we hear in many testimonies how God saved, God delivered. You know, at times we go through dark world. I mean, dark times in our life. And seem like we don't know where to turn. But with a small silent, small voice comes out, say, trust in me. That peace that we need to trust in, that delivery we need to trust in. That person that says high and look low, we need to trust in. Trust in his word to bring us through. Trust in his salvation in the word that can bring us out of the dark areas of our life. And Psalm 27, verse 1 says, this verse is basically saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? There is let us know. There is no need to be afraid. There is no, no need to be fearful. But when we have Christ on the inside, as my wife used that scripture, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Many times we can use the same scripture. We can stand on that word. So the greatest that he, the, he that's in us, that he is in the world. We can stand on the word because if you believe it and doubt not, it will come to pass. We must have this confidence in the Lord and in his direction, which he is guiding us. No matter, no matter what happened, no matter what's come, always keep your faith in the word of God. Keep your confidence in what his word said and how he will bring us through in this dark world. But if we just let our light shine and focus on doing his word and not doing our own self glory and pride. Let him have his way. Then our light will shine that much brighter. Not saying yourself, but the Christ that within you can be more than what you think. As I end this message for the night, uh, excuse me, this evening, it's about even time, but I know it's still morning in some places. Well, I want to compel each and every believer in Christ. Know that you are not only love. You're not only right light that shines in the darkness. You, we much more than, we much more than that. We are born again believers in Christ Jesus. Knowing where our strength comes from. Knowing that in him we have the ability to overcome circumstance, circumstance that others may not in darkness. We have a true and loving God that only covers us, protects us, but, but also is our refuge when trouble comes. Is our confidence when we need comfort. Is our healer when we need healing. All we have to do is just focus in the word and let God have his way in our life. And then only we can be true believers 
But most of all, we be more effective and let our light shine in this dying world that others might come to Christ to know him as we know him. To know him is to love him. To know him is to cherish him. <clears throat> Not because of the little things he do for us, which he do it each and every day without us even knowing, waking us up in the morning, closing up in our right mind, give us the strength to move and have our being. All the things that we take for granted because of not thinking, not realizing. But when we began to focus on what the word said and what Christ means to us, and as we get into his word to study his word, we begin to know that the love he shines and shows us, he will also show others. For Christ said he does not have any respect of person. For what he do for one, he will do for the other. So line, we must line ourselves up in this word, word that we can be that light in this dark world, that we can let it shine, not make it shine, just let it shine. Simple as that, because we are more than a conqueror in Christ. And as we live, we will be what Christ make us to be. Let him mold you and shape you in doing your will, his will, not your will. But let him have his way in your life that others might see. And you know, as he began to grow in my life, I see changes in my family, my friends. Not because they might not, uh, might not be saved, but Eventually, the word does wear off. The way I mean wear off, the word does take effect because it's the way that people look at you and see you. It's not all that you had saved, but it's the way that God is using you to be that light in this world. And as they begin to understand and say and respect you as who you are, then they can focus on what the word means to them. Sometimes they might look at it and say, how you get the way you is? Then you have the opportunity to spread the gospel, to spread the word, tell them what Christ means to you, how he lift you up out of the dark and mighty clay and make you stand on that solid rock. At this time, I'm going to end it with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your strength. Father God, we thank you that each and everyone hear the word may become a doer of the word. Most of all, we thank you that they not only become a doer, but just let their light shine. Because you said we are the light of this word, that others might see your glory and give you the praise, Father God. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to turn it back on into our pulpit leader.